Dart Maths Made Easy. This video is aimed at people who struggle with the mental arithmetic required to calculate scores in a game of darts. You will learn a few easy tricks to simplify the addition and subtraction of two and three digit numbers typically encountered during 01 games. If you are already comfortable with your ability to keep score, you don't really need to watch this video. Game on! In truth, calling it maths, or math if you're an American speaker, is overreaching somewhat. What we need is plain and simple arithmetic, the easiest part of mathematics. We don't even need multiplication and division, just addition and subtraction. Granted, there are doubles and triples to take into account, but you shouldn't be trying to do the multiplication every time. Instead, you should learn by heart the values of all the doubles and trebles. And yes, the correct term is treble, not triple. The good news is, you already know some of them. For example, what did I score with this dart? 60 points of course. I would hope that no dart player ever has to stop and think, what's 20 multiplied by 3? Here are all the values. Pause the video and take a screenshot if you wish. Study them until they become second nature. If you don't feel you can memorize them all, at least focus on the more common values such as treble 19, treble 18, double 16, double 18, etc. Okay. Now let's talk about addition. Your first challenge as a scorekeeper is to add the points thrown. So, let's throw some darts. First dart is a 60. Second dart is a 15. To be clear, the things I'm writing on the right-hand side of the screen are not things you would physically write down. This side represents what you are trying to work out in your head. The left-hand side of the screen will show what you actually write. Your task is to add 60 and 15. There's a very important principle used in this simple addition. Whenever one number ends in a zero, the last number in the answer will always be the other number's last digit. You don't have to think about it. There's no calculation involved. It's just there. That means, the only mental arithmetic you need to do is to add 6 and 1 to get 7, which then goes next to the 5 to give the answer 75. Here comes the third dart. It's another 60. Add 75 and 60 using the principle just learned. Start by adding the two left-hand digits, 6 and 7, to give 13. And, because the 60 ends in a 0, the 5 from 75 automatically drops into the last position, giving the answer of 135. Let's make things a little more difficult by making the third dart hit 57 rather than 60. Your challenge now is to add 75 and 57. But there's no zero at the end of either number, so the principle we just learned can't be applied. But there's a way around that problem. The trick to making this easy is to round up one of the numbers to a number that ends in a zero. For example, let's round 57 up to 60. We just did that exercise, and the answer we got was 135. Now we need to adjust that answer to allow for the fact that it was really 57, not 60, that we wanted to add. We do that by subtracting the difference between 57 and 60, to give the correct answer of 132. You might not need to use this trick in every situation. Some additions are so simple, they don't need any tricks. What's 21 plus 3? 24. Simple. But whenever the situation looks tricky, apply this solution. It works in any situation. Round up. Add. Subtract the difference. Like most things, it gets easier with practice. So let's practice. 60. 25. An easy addition. 6 plus 2 is 8. End it with a 5 to get 85. 57. Round up to 60 and add to 85. 8 plus 6 is 14. The 5 makes it 145. Now subtract 3 to get 142. Let's try to do the next example, without writing anything down. 60 and 54. Add 5 and 6 to get 11. A 4 on the end makes it 114. 19. Add 20 to 114 to get 134. 
then subtract 1 for a score of 133. At this point you might be thinking, and this makes it easier how? But I assure you, the more you practice using this principle, the easier it will get. So start using it and keep using it until it becomes second nature. Okay. Let's talk subtraction. The trick here is similar to the trick used for addition. We will round up the number to be subtracted. Then, after subtracting it, we will add back in the difference. In our previous example, the first player threw 133. The scorekeeper must now subtract that score from 501. Start by rounding 133 up to 140. The subtraction now becomes much easier to do in your head. When the rightmost digit of the number being subtracted is a zero, the rightmost digit of the other number automatically gives you the first digit of the answer. Now, all you have to be concerned with, are the numbers on the left. The problem becomes 50 minus 14. And the answer is 36. Finally, add back the 7, to get the correct result of 368. The next player throws. Eighty-five scored. Applying the principle you've just learned, you might subtract 90 from 501, and then add back 5 for the correct result of 416. But an even easier calculation is to subtract 100 and add back 15. By rounding up to 100, you've made the first step, 501 minus 100, a no-brainer. The trick works every time. Round up. Subtract. Add back the difference. If you want to subtract 89, subtract 100 and add back 11. If you want to subtract 180, subtract 200 and add back 20. Practice is the key to getting better. Challenge yourself, if you use an app to calculate your scores when practicing, turn it off for a while. The more you do it, the easier it gets. That's it for this video, but before we finish, I have a question. If you've watched any of my earlier videos, you will know that the voice on this one if not my voice. I was having some technical challenges recording my voice when I started this, so I used the online service, Speechalo, to produce the voiceover. My technical issue has been resolved, so I can go back to doing my own narration, or I could stick with this voice for future videos. What do you think I should do?